If you're thinking about moving to Massachusetts, you probably have had sticker shock either at the gas pump, at the grocery store, or home prices. Massachusetts is the third most expensive state in the country behind Hawaii and California. Yet people are still drawn to this area because of the history, the job opportunities, the colleges, and some of the best hospitals in the country. And a lot of people are moving down to Plymouth because you've got the beaches, you've got the history, but you have way more affordable housing. But what does it actually cost to live in Plymouth? That's what I'm gonna talk about today. Before we dive into what the actual cost of living is, we have to look at what the average income is. The average income in the state of Massachusetts is $84,385, the third highest in the country. The average income in Plymouth is $97,431. So we know that Plymouth on average has a higher net income than the average in the entire state of Massachusetts. But let's dive into what the actual cost of living in Plymouth is. First off, the home prices. The median sale price for the entire state of Massachusetts currently is $580,000. The median sale price for the Boston area is currently $795,000. And the median sale price right now for the town of Plymouth is $579,000. When you're comparing Plymouth to the Boston area, you can get a lot more house for your money in exchange for a little bit longer commute time. So with over a $200,000 difference between living in Plymouth and living in Boston, that has resulted in a lot of people moving down to the Plymouth area in exchange for a longer commute time. So if you're not looking to buy and you're looking to rent, the median rent in Massachusetts right now is $2,650. While in the town of Plymouth, the median rent is $2,250. As with home prices, the cost to rent has also increased substantially over the last two years. In a lot of areas, it's actually cheaper to buy a house than it is to rent. Now moving on to everyone's favorite topic, taxes, or what everybody likes to call us, tax achusets. I can't believe they stuck us at tax achusets. The sales tax in the state of Massachusetts is 6.25%. That is on everything except prescriptions, groceries, gas, and clothing. Now that sales tax is statewide. Property taxes are governed by each individual community. Now when we're talking about property taxes, we have to compare what the actual rate is versus what the actual property tax itself is. I get the question a lot about Plymouth and their, their high tax rate. And what that's referring to is the actual amount, that dollar amount per thousand on what the town will charge you for your property taxes. So if we looked at just the tax rate itself, Plymouth is actually rated one of the highest in the country at $15.43 per thousand. However, it doesn't necessarily tell you the whole story because that's based on valuation. If we looked at the average tax bill for the entire state of Massachusetts, the average bill is $6,719. But if we look at Plymouth's average tax bill, the bill is $6,438. You say, why is that lower? It's because of our valuations. A property in Plymouth with a median price of $579,000 versus a property in Boston that might have a lower tax rate, but the property valuation, the median sale price is $795,000. That's going to skew the numbers. You may have a lower rate, but a higher valuation, and your tax bill is actually gonna be higher than the property with a higher tax rate and the lower valuation. So it's important to look at and know the difference between those when you're comparing different communities. So now let's take a look at utilities, starting with electric bills. The average electric bill in the state of Massachusetts is $262. The average electric bill in the town of Plymouth is $245. Now, electricity can be very, very tricky. And the reason for that is because it's very much based on usage. Nowadays, with energy efficient devices, if you have a home that has an older dryer, it has an older stove, it has an older refrigerator, it uses older in the window air conditioners, that consumption is gonna be significantly more than the newer home or home that's been updated with new appliances. And then on top of that, we have to take into consideration the advent of solar and how more and more households are taking advantage of that savings with their electric bill. And lastly, a lot of people have gone to using mini splits or heat pumps as their main source of heat. These units are highly efficient. And even though it raises your electric bill slightly, the cost savings with fossil fuels is 
absolutely significant. I myself have mini splits. I use them for air conditioning and heating. Uh, I took a look at my bill for the last 12 months and I have an average 1700 square foot home. Uh, I have a home office, so I'm working from home using that electricity. I have two refrigerators. I do have propane for my stove, for my dryer, um, for my heat source when I don't use the mini splits. Uh, but the mini splits are more efficient. So I typically will run those in the winter um, more often than I do my, uh, that I use my traditional fossil fuel propane heating system. Um, I also used it for air conditioning during the summer. This past summer was extremely hot and pretty much between allergy season, I'm an allergy sufferer. So as soon as the pollen starts falling, the air conditioner goes on and that runs pretty much nonstop until the fall. My average bill for the last 12 months was $168. So way less than what the average typical usages for the town of Plymouth or the state of Massachusetts. The other thing with solar I would just add on is that we're in an area on the South Shore, the lots are a little bit bigger than being in the city, and a lot of people take advantage of putting solar panels on their homes. That in itself can zero out your electric bill over the course of 12 months. And not only that, but if you are generating enough electricity to feed the system, you can actually get credits back from the electric company uh, and be in the negative. So if we talk about heating costs, you basically have four different choices. You have oil, propane, natural gas, and then electricity. And we've already talked about electricity, you know, via heat pumps or even baseboard, heat, you know, electric uh, baseboard heating. The most expensive out of all those options is definitely oil. So the average oil bill in the state of Massachusetts is $2,237. Now the next step down from that would be propane. Uh, Plymouth is an area that doesn't have natural gas going to every home. Uh, the town is 102 square miles, so we don't have natural gas that goes to every home. We don't have town water, town sewer going to every home. Um, so when there's not natural gas, the alternative is to go to a propane tank or an underground propane tank. Now the average yearly cost for propane in Massachusetts is $1,583. However, that is also subjective. Um, if we looked at my household bill, again, I run everything that can be connected to propane is. So I have my gas stove, I've got my gas dryer, I've got my uh, hot water, my heat. Uh, I even have my grill connected to my main propane tank. And all of those combined, my average bill roughly runs about $2,300 a year. Now the most efficient way, the least expensive option for heating fuel is definitely natural gas. The average natural gas bill for the state of Massachusetts is $840 a year. It is by far the least expensive option out of all the fuel options. Now let's talk about water and sewer. So the downtown area of Plymouth does have uh, town water and town sewer, but that area is very limited. Once you get outside that area, you're going to have private wells and on-site septic systems. Now, if you have a well, essentially you have on-demand water, the cost of running that well is gonna be added into your electric bill. It is not substantial, especially if you have a newer well pump, but it is an extra cost. Compared to having connection to town water, when the town of Plymouth, that will run you roughly about 50 to $100 per quarter. One of the big differences between having the well and having town water, me personally, I have an irrigation system and I have a well, so I don't have any restrictions when it comes to watering my lawn and I'm not restricted on the amount of time or how many days a week I wanna water my lawn. If you're on town water, they will regulate. During this past summer, uh, we had tons and tons of restrictions with people that had town water uh, because of the drought situation that we were in. Now, septic systems or sewer systems, if, again, if you are living in that downtown area, you have the option or you have the ability to be connected to town sewer, again, that bill is going to run you about $50 to $100 a quarter, depending on usage. Um, if you're outside that area, then you're dealing with a septic system uh, that's on site. And those septic systems can be pricey to replace. Um, the town of Plymouth, you're probably talking anywhere between $22,000 and $27,000. They have a life expectancy of about 30 years. Um, however, 
with a system that's already in place, it's an upgraded system, a system that has been uh, inspected and, and has a, a long life expectancy, that cost is minimal. The on-site septic system does require some maintenance every two to three years having it pumped. It's a minimal cost, two to three hundred dollars, you know, every couple two three years uh, to get that serviced and cleaned out. But aside from that, there's no extra cost to having that on-site septic system. Now we've talked about home prices, rent, taxes, utility bills. Now we're going to move on to my favorite subject, food. So the average grocery bill in the state of Massachusetts for a family of four, the average is nine hundred seventy-two dollars a month. So for that $972, it is safe to assume you're not eating filet every night. Uh, you are probably going out to dinner at least once a week. So living in Plymouth myself, I have a family of two, just myself and my daughter. My other daughter is off to college. Um, our average bill is about $670 a month. That does not include um, a couple of takeouts, you know, during heavy sports season, which typically, you know, the fall and the spring is, you know, when we uh, when we're running a little tight on our schedule and, and we grab something quick or whatnot. Uh, but on average, six hundred seventy two dollars is what we're spending a month for all of our groceries. And then the last thing I wanted to mention is child care. Now, the state of Massachusetts is not great for the average cost of child care. A family in the state of Massachusetts can expect to spend an average of $20,913 a year in child care. Child care in Massachusetts is the highest in the country. So for that reason, over the last 10 years, I have absolutely seen a change in home buying habits to compensate for that child care expense cohabitation with family members, uh, you know, grandparents moving in, buying homes near grandparents for easy daycare. And that has definitely been something that has helped offset that cost. So if you've made it to this point in the video and you are still thinking about buying a house in Massachusetts before you make the jump, make sure you check out my video on the reasons why you may not want to call Plymouth your home. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.